affairs and employment. I would like to wish you all welcome to the open space session with the Innovation Ecosystems and International Human Capital on 25th of April. Uh, we will meet here in the Microsoft Flux venue uh, and uh, this is the perfect example of an inclusive innovation platform. Uh, I would uh, like to start the conversation already now before the event and welcome you to uh, start thinking why would our innovation uh, ecosystem need internationals. Please give your comments below. Try to go that way, we can start. If this is not hard enough, I have a bell which is then. I think that we are quite close to be seated, so I welcome you all to this session. Um, uh, my name is Kari Mikkela, I'm from Urban Mill. I will be facilitating this together with all the presenters and then during this day we will then work quite a lot together. But I thought that because this is a co-creation, an interactive session together, so we could start so that you start to talk, so that you should take one person who is close to you and it's not the closest you, you know, working uh, friend and tell who you are and why you are here. You have two minutes to do that, you both do it. So you at least know one person here. <laughs> it works. So I use that when I, I try to get you silent. So I hope that now at least you have discussed already with somebody and you know what is happening here. Uh, we go further. So our program is here you all have got in, the, in this real environment. You can use the environment all the time. If you are, are in the mobile phones, uh, you go to the link and you can add the videos, text, whatever you want, comment the speeches, etc. So that's available. And all the things uh, what we do are after the session there. And also Jarmo Lahti, who is streaming this out, will publish uh, the streams afterwards and they will be found somewhere from the ministry's pages and on this uh, site which is there. And then uh, th if you saw that we have the Wi-Fi access there so in, on both sides you see it, it's we are in flux is the, the uh, password and if you are tweeting there are this in talent and growth via talents hashtags which we use so please be free to use them. And uh, before um, I give this to Agnieszka or Aga, uh, I just say that we have a change in the, in the program. So Jari Gustafsson is rescuing the country. I think that there's prime minister has a meeting there so he can be here. So Ilona Lundström will be opening that. And is it so that you are staying in the wrap up also? Yeah, <laughs> so if she leaves, it's, it's somebody else who wants her there. So, but uh, I will give uh, the first floor for the Microsoft. We are th their guests, and Aga will tell something about that. And I till, uh, give this too, because the streaming goes out from here. So, uh, can you hear me as well? Yeah. So, my name is Agnieszka. Uh, I'm originally from Poland, so just a few words about myself. So um, I came to Finland four years ago, uh, in March was four years. I started studying in here. In here I studied international business and I'm, I'm quite close to finishing my bachelor's degree in international business from Haga Helia. So I started working for Microsoft Flux in December. How many of you have actually been here to Flux before? Okay, so you have been, so all of the rest weren't. Okay. <coughs> So um, what Microsoft Flux does, it's uh, we are helping out the startups with uh, especially early stage startups 
with uh, finding their idea, finding their uh, network, finding uh, their uh, team members, and then the, just finding the community to be at. So Microsoft Flex is a startup community where we offer free of charge space, we offer free of charge coffee, tea, sodas, and then we offer free of charge resources like the devices and we offer as well people as the resource in here. So I myself am taking care of the events. So I was in touch with organizers for quite a while today, I mean like and before for the event in here. And I'm taking care of the space itself. And we have two more people who are working here. We have Aki who is a business person. He is actually coaching the startups, helping them out with the uh, business ideas, with finding right customer group, with uh, developing their products. He's uh, having a lean workshop every Tuesday in here. He's going to have one tomorrow as well. Um, and then we have Mo, who is actually helping out with all of the technical issues that the startups might have in a way of helping out with, for example, the Microsoft products like the Azure Cloud, but as well with like coding and developing, you know, like their ideas. So every single person who actually comes here should anticipate being rather open up and talking to other people rather than just looking for a quiet space to work at. So usually the space that you're sitting at, uh, it's full of tables and it's as well like there's music playing all the time. So it's kind of more, more of a, you know, like fun and work rather than just sit down, work and, you know, like just, you know, like do your thing. So pretty much you can expect that any day that you come here, there might be somebody who will just randomly approach you and just ask, so what are you doing? What are you working on? Are you, do you need some help? Do you need some feedback? And uh, this is pretty much what we try to do in here. We try to help the early stage startups who cannot afford renting the office or cannot afford having some legal advice and that type of things with everything what we offer on a daily basis, plus all of the events that we are hosting, which are supposed to, you know, like bring the important topics as well, but the very, you know, like basic topics like how to actually create a startup, how to find, uh, for example, funding, how to find team members, how to make the contracts. So there is a lot to it. And uh, I just hope that you will enjoy the uh, event today as well. And I hope that it will be a very productive one. So thank you very much. So we are going to start the session. First, I, I show you one thing about the, the uh, sessions about the innovation ecosystems and international talents. Uh, Today, you have the papers there on, you, on your chairs. So please make notes. And, and as, as it was said, that we look now the international talent from the innovation ecosystem point of view. And there are questions about that, how it can support more the businesses to grow. Another thing is how new professionals and startups, the people side, but also that how it supports the public sector to do and serve better. So we have those three things and these are now in your framework. And when you are listening all the speeches starting from Ilona, please make your notes and if you have something which is in mind, put it on the paper. We need in the next session. Then after these presentations, we do some uh, group work. It seems to be that we have eight groups because they're, that we can fix here. And there we then look a little bit at the challenges and there is things what then the ministry wants to get out and I, I give this to Laura so that Laura is organizing the whole thing so that what is the output what you expect or hope that the people give you when we uh, end. Hi all, great to see you all here. Um, well, oh, I thought that this is the yeah, microphone. Okay. Yeah. Oh? This is Straight. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, I will uh, go in more details in my presentations uh, later, but um, I hope that we will have really, really interactive session, and I know that we will because I've seen you uh, behaving quite well already in the real uh, workspace. So, uh, I think that uh, we will have really, really interesting discussions and. Uh, I think that uh, not only discussions, but also concrete tools for uh, making our business uh, communities, our innovation 
communities, our networks more inclusive for international talents uh, in order to uh, tap the potential that our international talents have and channel all that to uh, success of, of our business sector as well. So, but more later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Laura. And then we go actually start. So Ilona has the opening words. Um, yes. My name is Ilona Lundström. I work as Director General at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment. And I have the privilege to be here today with you actually the whole afternoon. Uh, as long as the Prime Minister doesn't call us and, and say that, hey guys, we need some serious help, then we have to take taxis and head to, to his, his place. Um, but I think we couldn't be more appropriate in timing discussing these teams, themes today here, both uh, people, talent, uh, internationalization, and then ecosystem, which is actually um, my personal favorite, since I am a strong believer in in the fact that nobody makes it alone, especially from a place like Finland that is very far away. If we look from the outside world, we are basically a, a size of a city. Uh, although Finland is not an island, if we look at it from the world, it looks like an island. Island, And um, I, I think in, in succeeding in this, in this world in the future, having the next innovative hundred years, having the, the kind of the best possible next hundred years in Finland, we do need um, not the brain power we have already here today in Finland, but also some new brain, brain power to succeed with the innovation, to, to have those successes we want to have in the future. And I, I think we have some, some, some evidence showing that although, although all the comparisons and, and statistics and, and others show, that we are actually quite, quite good in, in, in every uh, different kind of uh, um, metrics, whether it is innovation environment or it is, um, it is our, our workforce or the safety, security or whatever. I think we don't score that high in, in kind of turning that into new ideas, turning that, that into turnover. And also, for example, the foreign direct investments, they don't come that much to Finland. Some yes, some very ni nice news. I just met my friend Mikko from GE Healthcare, and, and for example, the program we have been working together, the, the health, uh, digital health program is one great example of what we actually can achieve here in Finland, but at the same time, it is a collaboration, and it is an international collaboration <coughs> based on some skills that we actually do uh, have here in Finland right now. So that is a, a very good example what we can do from Finland and what is possible uh, to do here in Finland. But one or two or three great examples doesn't make the summer yet, but we need a plenty of those to actually succeed in, in the future as well. Um, we have actually um, commissioned an innovation policy view from uh, OECD to receive an independent assessment on our innovation system together with the Ministry of Cultural Affairs and, and Research. And that shows very well that, for example, internationalization is one of, on, one of the areas where we actually need to work uh, more, to achieve more and to have very much indeed um, measures that, that take place um, in, the, in the next fu uh, near future. One of the other, other points that was was uh, kind of um, lifted up from that review is that uh, the ecosystems or the public-private partnerships are something that we should um, very much focus on in the near future. And right now, when the government is sitting in, in Kesaranta and, and figuring out the half-term evaluation of the governmental program, one of the issues they are, or one of the themes they are discussing today is the, the kind of um, future model for collaboration between the government and, and the companies here and, and research here in Finland and whether we are going to have a, some kind of new model of, of working together and, uh, and building those ecosystems that we need for the future here in Finland. And those both um, messages come very strongly from, from the OECD evaluation and, and we ought to take, they take them very very seriously indeed. If I look at uh, uh, kind of the current uh, 
questions where we are heading right now and what is still in the in the plate. One is the uh, kind of the Team Finland efforts that we have been uh, having and what we can do even better more. And in this sense, I also very much welcome your uh, insights, your comments, your ideas, how we could be even better on that side. We are committed to build a new, new organization called Business Finland, and this is the very best um, moment to tell your, tell your wishes, tell your ideas, give your, give your insight what we should do and what we should do in a better, better manner to, to succeed also on the, kind of, on the international network that we have uh, all over the globe. And what we could even more uh, efficiently um, or give to our, our companies and how could we could also, also attract international talent and boost growth on, on this area better than we do um, right now. I'm very much looking forward to these discussions today. Please be active, please be very frank indeed, since I think that is the most efficient way to come forward with this, um, these ideas, these messages and, and these, these uh, good ideas that we are going to have today. And, and I wish you all the best. Let's have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Sonia Hamelan, Director of Migration is going to start and you tell a little bit more about the program and <coughs> why we are here. So please. Thank you. And do I need the other? Yes, yes. you need, you need. I put it. That's if you... Yeah, I can hold it. Yeah. Yeah, so warm welcome also from, from me. I'm very happy to see you all here. Ilon already made quite a good start by telling us all why we are here and I'm indeed we are very much looking forward to hearing your ideas and views on how we can do better in in one thing in Finland that being how how can we better in utilizing the the creativity and diversity that people that enter into Finland for various reasons how can we do better in in using the networks that they have uh, they bring with them and how can we how can we do uh, actually turn this into growth for our companies and, and uh, also make our you know, innovation ecosystems more diverse? I think this is at the core of our day today. But that being said, this is very easy to say. Then we have to actually do the magic. How is all this done? So I, I will show you a few slides. I will not be very. Uh, I will try to be rather brief, but I will give you a little bit of background. How did we? How did we come up? Uh, uh, with this situation that we have today. So we know already now that um, at the moment we have about roughly more than 200,000 foreign, foreign speaking uh, people residing in Finland. And at the same time we know when we look at the figure down there by 2030 we will, be, we, we will have about half a million people living in Finland. And this is a significant number. When we look at Finnish uh, population now, we all know that we are a population of about 5 million. So if half a million people are foreigners, it is not a marginal question. How do we make better use of these people? How are we more welcoming as a society? But it is a key question in my view. And in order to answer to this question, we need to ask these quest uh, questions that we are asking ourselves today. But this is something we cannot do alone. We need you all in, in, in answering these questions. And I'm very happy that you, I don't know if we have circulated the list of participants, but I have read it. And, and there is nothing random about you being here, trust me. Uh, uh, <laughs> you have been very carefully selected. We have civil servants, obviously, uh, but that's just the starting point. We cannot do this alone. Ilona is uh, the head of innovation ecosystems in Finland and we are very happy to have you here for the whole day. And then we have universities. When we talk about um, innovations, when we talk about diversity, quite naturally we look at universities. We have University of Helsinki, I think Aalto University, Tampere, so we are not only looking at the capital region. Then of course, if what are we trying to do? We are trying to create growth for our companies. Well, we need the company, so we have a lot of companies here today. So please do let us know what it is that you need from our services. How can we be better in providing you the kind of structures, platforms and most importantly human capital? That's what we are here doing today. How can we better in serving you diverse human capital that you need for your growth and your innovation and your networks growing globally? A few figures here. This is the figure that shows how many people enter into Finland each year, more than 30,000. This is the figure that says 
each year the capital region in Finland uh, uh, increases by 11,000 uh, foreign native uh, foreign nationals, 20,000 foreign students and researchers in our universities. About 3,000 stay uh, uh, graduate each year. But do you know the figure that actually stays in Finland? very low and this is something that I would like to focus much more on. We lose our talent at the moment and we don't we can't really afford doing that and I go later into why not just because if we lose them we lose the networks but also it is very key to attracting people. The more diverse the more dynami dynamic and more multicultural inter international uh, ecosystem we have for our universities, for our ecosystems, for our l labor market, the more attractive it will also become. When people talk about attraction, they usually only talk about per permissions and work permit, but that, that's only a starting point. Much more crucial is what kind of environment do we create for our international? Are we attractive or are we not? So this is something that I would very much like to focus on today. And then next step, we know we are growing old. Uh, and definitely we are actually facing the demographic challenge uh, as the first nation in Europe at the moment. So we are growing grey more rapidly than the other European nations. If we want to do better in the international competition for talent, this is also a key factor. We know already now that we cannot afford to be on this down track where we grow grey. If we want to attract the people here, uh, that's one thing, but we also need to be, mu be much better in using the people who already are here. And that's al also qu quite important in my view that we focus on today. Diverse workforces are more innovative. This is a statement that is, uh, I, I'm sure we have all, all heard and I'm sure we all agree. Uh, diversity is uh, usually more innovation, it's more new ideas, it's more thinking out of the box. But are we very diverse in our innovation ecosystems? Elon already mentioned the OECD findings. And one of the key findings was that we should be more diverse, more multicultural, in order to create more, more creative ecosystems for our innovation systems. And this is, again, something that is, is quite high on today's agenda. We, I'm sure we all today in the group of believers I agree that this is something that we need to do. What I want to focus more today is the magic. How do we do this? Please be very specific because we have really handpicked you today in a, in a way. So please don't be shy in, in, in bringing forward your ideas. A few, a few reasons why we should do better even though we already know that we should. But of course money talks and figures talk. Uh, Swedish studies have shown that uh, migration, well, increases competitiveness foreign trade for sure but by how much it's quite staggering figures if you look at here 12 percent growth in import and nine percent uh, in in experts and this uh, has happened in uh, in sweden already and 900 billion growth so it's not some pocket money that we are talking about here we already know now that the economic is going a little bit on on the uphill again so it's not in the distant future when the talent uh, uh, or even war for international talent is, around, is happening. It's actually around the corner, if not here today already, and we need to be better prepared for that. I don't know if I lost the... No, it's just a pen. And, and then I, w I will uh, just very briefly like to show you one study. It's Uutta Osaamista PK Yrityksiin, which says about um, how can we do our small and medium-sized enterprises uh, do better in, in when it comes to human capital. And it's again, here we have some quite interesting figures. 36% of the companies found new possibilities for growth when they actually hired international talent. I think that is a quite convincing figure. And again, uh, when we know already from when we have done these questionnaires that lack of international competence is one of the biggest challenges for ISMEs. So when we ask the companies, they don't actually say that it's government funding that is prohibiting them from growing. They say that it's the lack of international competence. And these are, in my view, are some of the key messages. And again, this is the background. Let's go today. How do we make this happen? Another thing we asked about our companies, I, I, you can read all this here, but you can see what the companies that already have done this, they have already hired international talent. Useful contacts, one, of, one fourth, 
new market opportunities, I think it's quite good, one, one in five. So this is definitely the things that we need for our growth in Finland. And then obviously language skills about 50%, but I would like to mo focus more on these tar target market growth opportunities, useful contacts. So it's quite a, qu quite a convincing figure there as well. <laughs> Why a camel? <laughs> well, because this is something that Laura likes to call, um, what, what was it? Um, uh, some kind of accidental, uh, um, what did you call uh, this? Written accident. Yeah, written, written accident. Yeah. So we have a camel here because sometimes good things happen when, when, you, don't, when you least expect them. And we, have a, we had a, pers a company that is, um, it, a very Finnish company that is um, manufacturing track suits for horses because you know that tra track horses are very expensive so they need to have these warm-up suits. And then just by mere accident they met people from uh, uh, was it somewhere in the MENA area, let's say, uh, let's say, Maybe Saudi Arabia. yeah, Saudi Arabia, <laughs> somewhere there. And they had a similar thing, they have very expensive competing camels. And just by mere accident, they met these two and they started co-creating. It was not a case where there is a need and there is a product, but it was a ma matter of co-creating. Uh, co and they met and they used some international talent and as a result, this absolutely Finnish company is now uh, exporting camel track suits by millions into this country. And this is something that I'm, uh, we are just using this as an example, that when you create these platforms, this would never have ha happened without a platform. So some t it's not about that you have a need and you have a solution, but it's about bringing these things together and seeing what comes up. And this is at the core of our meeting today. We need to have innovating, inclusive and open innovation ecosystems in, in my mind. And again, I come back to this, please, please let us know how do we do that. And uh, do we go to Laura already? No. Uh, or oh, I yes. Can, I can no, no, this is about the, <laughs> I already mentioned earlier that the um, uh, competition for talent is already here. It's not around the corner. And this is something that I, I, in my view, we can definitely do better. It's not really on today's agenda. I forgot to mention in, in the beginning that we actually have a series of three workshops. You are now in the second one. And the second one is about open, inclusive <coughs> innovation ecosystems. The first one we did was about how do we bring this that we are talking about into talent fin team Finland development. Ilona already touched a little bit on that. And, and how we can do it better in our services for the companies when they need in, uh, support for their growth and internalization. That was the first workshop. Now we are in the second, and the third one will be then about the how can we do better in talent attraction. But of course, these all are very, very much interlinked. But again, I w uh, uh, Laura's point here for me was to show you that China, New Zealand, Estonia, Sweden, all the other countries are doing at, at talent attraction already. And our efforts are, well, I'll leave it at that. So, <laughs> well, we are doing something, but we definitely can do better. And this is the last slide that I will show before we go into, Laura, does it need another yeah. clip? Yes. Usually when we talk about international <laughs> competence, I'm sure it's not the case today here because you are all in the know. But if we go out there to a wider audience and I say that international talent is something that we need, do you know what they reply? Of course, because it's cultural knowledge. <laughs> and that's all, it's also always reduced into cultural knowledge. And this is again uh, some kind of, uh, um, if, if not a, well at least uh, some kind of false uh, idea that I would like to break, uh, not just here, but uh, out in the wider community that, no, actually it's much more than that. It's networking, it's multicultural teams, and as I said earlier, we, we will not be attractive to the, tap, uh, to the top uh, high skilled workers out there if we don't have multicultural teams, diverse workforce, etc. Our universities, they, they, w they need to be uh, quite, uh, they can be attractive if they are multicultural, etc. So maybe I leave it at that and then I turn over to Laura, please. Okay, wow, thanks. Uh, okay, so um, I guess I should introduce myself. I didn't do it uh, when Kari uh, just suddenly asked me to <laughs> comment in the beginning. Uh, so I'm Laura Lindemann and I also work uh, for the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, and Employment uh, in Sonia's team uh, and I'm the one who've, who's been sending emails to you. 
so welcome again. Uh, I would like to tell you a story about Maddy. Um, uh, he's uh, from Senegal originally, but uh, he has graduated from uh, France, from Lille, and 10 years ago, uh, uh, as a uh, master's, uh, with his master's degree from economic, economics, he moved to Finland uh, because of a family, family reasons, and uh, he ended up uh, in uh, cleaning and driving taxi. Uh, but last year uh, happened something. Uh, back uh, in France, he had been establishing an uh, African trade fair, and uh, then he heard that uh, they might be coming to Finland. And, uh, and here, uh, in this picture, uh, he's not driving a taxi anymore or cleaning, but he's there with Pekka Haavisto and other guys uh, in North African uh, trade fair, uh, and uh, he was one of the organizers. And uh, he met people there, uh, and he got contacts with Finnish business people, and uh, now uh, he's uh, doing business with some Finnish colleagues uh, in Senegal, and uh, for example, uh, taking uh, old uh, trash cars, I don't know how to say Jate Auto, uh, those to uh, Senegal. Uh, but it took 10 years for him that uh, he ended up in that, what he was doing. Uh, here in the first picture, uh, he's with the uh, uh, in France with the Minister of Migration, and he has just received uh, a prize of uh, export uh, activities. And uh, Finland lost 10 years uh, with this talent. Uh, where is Pete? Would you like to have this? This is familiar for you. Yeah, it is. Whoop! <laughs> okay, where should I start? Um, okay, uh, together with Vasa University, we did a project for Rita Herpu. And uh, Rita Herpu had some inquiries from China, Japan, Germany, and, um, and UK. Uh, for the Finnish wild blueberry. And um, so he approached the Vasa University and we had 45 students working for them in one, one course, which was called, called cross-cultural marketing communication. And uh, half of them were internationals, half of them were Finns. And uh, how long this story can be short? Not, not too long. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, so basically these international talents were brainstorming together with uh, Marina Sabel, who is the uh, owner and the CEO of the company, and it was quite interesting f to follow the, uh, the conversation when there was like German a student asking from Marina that why are you calling, uh, calling it blueberry soup? Why are you not calling it for... Uh, blueberry smoothie and um, and also what they were talking that everyone is talking about super uh, super <coughs> food and uh, and that it's a trend it's a mega trend at the moment and um, and everyone knows how healthy all the healthy benefits that the blueberries have so so they came up with this new brand for the blueberry soup that that Rita Nerku has and actually what happens after after this project uh, three of the internationals got job and uh, if you go to Rita Nerku uh, to their new new homepage the new homepage and the branding is made after these uh, like based on these ideas that they got from the students so Collaboration between universities and business life can create lots of opportunities for, for the students and, uh, and also for the company. Thanks for this surprise. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is a great example of, uh, of um, 
what diversity can bring and also uh, that uh, Rita and Herku uh, just needed some push, uh, just uh, <coughs> new ways to look, uh, look at the same thing. So, uh, so I think it's a good example. I need to put it somewhere to make it, put it back, sorry. Okay. Um, then I have another surprise. Uh, Mari is there. <laughs> uh, there is a case of a uh, Finnish company uh, from Pirkkala, Black Donuts. Uh, yes. Uh, well, this is a company case. Of course, it's a little bit confidential, but maybe I can reveal short version. <laughs> <laughs> short version about the Black Donuts. So it's a tire company which is building uh, entire. Um, uh, industrial uh, hubs to different countries and uh, targeting especially to the developing countries. And one of the projects were, was concentrated on Algeria. And uh, they contacted us because uh, the project was ongoing there and uh, they needed somebody who knows the language, knows the culture and knows the uh, bureaucracy uh, behind the permissions, uh, permits and, and so forth. So what we did, uh, we we sent, we have we are coordinating ambassador and talent Tampere networks at uh, Tampere Economic and Development Agency, Tredea at Tampere. We send uh, messages to our contacts to our networks, and uh, found two candidates who could help uh, Black Donuts to to find a suitable talent uh, for their needs to get the Algerian project uh, to move on. So the company was so happy <laughs> that after one week they sent us a message that uh, this, this has helped them to, to take this uh, project forward and uh, a lot of, uh, they are very uh, grateful for us and uh, that we are doing a good job to crea uh, creating these kind of networks and helping the companies. Yes. Thank you, Mari. Uh, so I uh, this is again an example of uh, something that needs to be done. It needs to be facilitated somehow. It's, uh, it doesn't hap happen just like that. You need to facilitate uh, these kind of connections to happen. And uh, they are doing a great job uh, in Tampere. And uh, I'm sure that you others uh, have the same kind of stories. And I hope you would share them uh, with us today. Uh, this is uh, uh, just to show that uh, we have also new opportunities here when we get more and more migrants. We will have different kind of customers and we shouldn't forget about that in uh, innovating new things. Um, migration is a good thing for us. We, I think we all uh, believe in that here in this room, but uh, it's not uh, beneficial for our economy if we don't have certain kind of services for that, if we don't, uh, if we are not inclusive, if we just think that it happens just like that, uh, we should have that kind of policies that uh, support channeling the competencies of migrants to our uh, economic life. Uh, Mika Raunio has uh, studied this uh, in his uh, Innovatio Talouden Maahanmuuttopolitiikka. Where is Mika? Here. Here. Oh, yes. So would you like to tell uh, a bit about that and or one or two conclusions from your study? All right. Well, I try to be short and simple, just like me. <laughs> so, uh, so the idea of this uh, we already heard all the kind of arguments why we should do what we are going to do here today. And uh, I think the simple idea of this uh, 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 report was that we already have a lot of uh, uh, places and communities who are connecting foreign talent to innovation and business communities in Finland. And that's kind of a key issue. So we don't need that much kind of a policy politics from uh, from ministries or but we should foster these communities in what they are already doing 
because they are connecting people with business and they are connecting people with innovation environments and that's how you can get your talent used. So that was the simple idea. So the idea uh, that you had is that the state should support this kind of activities and yes, okay. Uh, I was uh, talking quite a lot with uh, Mika when he was doing this uh, research and uh, we got really uh, concrete ideas from uh, Mika. Uh, I was working uh, in Tampere Region Economic Development Agency back then and uh, <coughs> we took it seriously what <laughs> Mika was telling us that uh, we should uh, create platforms where companies and international talents can meet and co-create. So uh, we asked people to come together to uh, think of this and we had Twinkle 2014 with 150 people uh, and from that uh, those people who were the most active ones there uh, talking about inter connecting international talents and companies they decided that let's go for it and uh, let's have a have bigger event and uh, 2015 uh, we had two days event with thousand participants in uh, Tampere Hall uh, with 80 speakers, facilitators, 80 partners and we had uh, 100 volunteers, international talents to make this happen in nine months and without any money actually. <laughs> so, uh, and what this brought was different kind of uh, ideas for co-creation and for businesses, what kind, uh, it made it visible what international competence can be. Uh, here is pa uh, Paulina Ahokas, who is uh, the CEO of Tampere Hall. Uh, they had one workshop there in, uh, in this Twinkle event uh, about their Hamoumin Museum that is uh, about to open uh, now. Uh, and. Uh, they saw that it's very important to listen to uh, international audience, to international talents, also because uh, most of their customers are internationals. And they, uh, they also got an idea about an ambassador program, a Moomin ambassador program in that uh, workshop in this Twinkle event. Uh, by the way, if you want to hear more about Twinkle, there is uh, Beatrice uh, sitting there. She is uh, taking care of Twinkle nowadays. Uh, and one aspect uh, more uh, is that I think that there are a lot of good things happening, but uh, we, don't, we don't stop to s uh, see if they are inclusive or not. For example, Kasvu Open is a really, really great uh, internationalization program for companies. Uh, but everything uh, was in Finnish uh, and uh, what we did uh, was that we started to talk with them that could we somehow add a talent aspect that uh, it's like Sonia said that it's one of the biggest reasons uh, for companies uh, not to succeed in their internationalization so you should somehow have a solution for this talent part also in this Gospel Open program. Uh, so we created uh, Pro uh, for Talents uh, track uh, in Gospel Open and now it's running uh, for the second time in, in Tampere and it's totally inclusive for international talents and Finns. Okay, um, with all this uh, background, uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment uh, initiated uh, an agenda called International Talents Boosting Growth or Kasvua Kansainvälistä Osaista last autumn. Uh, and this uh, session that we have today is uh, one of the sessions that where we want to have interaction with uh, our different stakeholders uh, in order to get concrete tools to implement this agenda. Uh, the targets of this uh, agenda uh, are that international talents would find Finland attractive, uh, business sector uh, utilizes networks and expertise 
uh, of international talents uh, in accelerating growth and internationalization. Uh, and also uh, what we are talking especially today about is uh, that our ecosystems would be more inclusive for uh, internationals. A uh, concrete thing that we are uh, already uh, taking forward is uh, relate to <coughs> Team Finland and especially Business Finland. Uh, we are uh, about to start uh, constructing, uh, constructing Talent Finland component in Team Finland. Uh, so what Team Finland has been lacking uh, has been this uh, talent point of view. So now uh, we will uh, start est establishing that kind of a uh, talent. Finland is still a working name, but let's see if it's called like that in the future. Uh, but uh, the point is that that would be kind of the coordination place of different kind of talent pools uh, around Finland, <coughs> boosting their visibility and matching them to companies that are searching for services for their internationalization so they would get it under the same roof um, and also uh, it it's supposed to boost uh, attraction of uh, talents also uh, in country promotion for example uh, but you can uh, we can talk more about this later and I'm happy to help uh, give you more information about this but I won't go to that deep now uh, then I would like to introduce a research uh, program that uh, we are in now. Uh, Nina uh, Rilla is sitting there. Uh, there is a, a research team from VTT present today. Uh, so they use you as their material. <laughs> uh, the study uh, is a um, comparison study from international models uh, about connecting international talents to uh, economic politics and uh, there are, uh, the focus will be especially in Denmark, Netherlands, Austria and Canada. And uh, then there, uh, yeah, uh, then I will just want to let you know that uh, there will also be project call and uh, especially for the companies who are here, uh, check out this co uh, competition, successful multicultural uh, company competition. Uh, you can take part in, in the competition organized by the Chamber of Commerce uh, here in Helsinki. And uh, also then you will get into the gala uh, in, in October. So that's good. Uh, Okay, but that's it from me. Then Tina, uh, oh there, yes, we'll take it from here. Okay, hello, hello everyone. My name is Tina, Tina Vihmapurovar, and um, I'm from the Ministry of Education, Science and Culture, from the uh, Department for Higher Education and Science Policy. Um, our ministry is uh, in charge of many things, um, education, all levels, science, um, culture, uh, sports, youth, some church affairs, and we have one minister. But still, um, it's um, effective and a small ministry, and uh, we are doing our best. And uh, when we are talking about these issues, what we are talking about today, uh, we have a bit kind of broader context. So we are talking about whole society, because that's our mission. It's um, the, um, the culture um, civilisatio, civistus, that's uh, kind of big, more, more broad than, than, than only companies, but that's for the whole competitiveness and the whole well-being of country and for the impact of uh, higher education and research in, 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 in this context. So what I'm um, telling you about is uh, very shortly, because I don't have very much time, is that we have been formulating new guidelines for international, uh, enhancing international um, um, actions and internationalization 
of higher education and research in Finland. We had this um, pretty big steering group uh, working last year and then we had uh, the paper published just a month ago. It's now in Finnish, Yhteistyössä maailman parasta, but we made a, um, a short version of it in, in English and this will, the long version will be coming in English as well. Um, but um, the, the, uh, the whole idea is to, um, to see actually two, two things. First, that what we have to do here at home, and we are talking about uh, internationalization at home. This is very important. And then the other part, of course, is that how, how Finland is seen from outside. And this is the kind of branding issue that was talked about, issued as already. And here in this, <coughs> this slide, um, sorry, too many papers, um, we have the core elements of, of this, um, this paper, actually. So that we have kind of seven pillars, what we are going to do, but then they have this kind of basement, the, um, the, the stones where these uh, different actions are lying on. And uh, of course, the first thing is that we have to have quality in all our education, ho whole education system, but in higher education and research. We must be attractive. We must have something that is so high quality that it attracts also uh, talents, but also business investments and so forth. And then what is even more important for the success is the genuinely international higher education community. First, when we were thinking about the whole, whole procedure, we were thinking that we don't need this kind of discussion anymore because we are already international, but that's not the case. You know this. And uh, this is something that makes a difference, as it was already said by, by my colleagues, so that this is a joint um, challenge in Finland. Um, as, as we were talking about um, these kind of different uh, international, uh, what I was writing here is that uh, thinking about the kind of whole society and a whole, whole the, um, the international dimension, the renewal and, and the quality and um, what every, everything comes with it when, when there are more than homogeneous people talking with each other. So um, higher education institutions and research institutions are the kind of natural basis for this kind of um, international landscape, isn't it? And, and the role should be also to put this uh, message of, of the renewal and of the quality to the regions, to the municipalities, to the business enterprises, to NGOs, well, whatever. So this is the kind of thing that th this is our role and we have to push our higher education institutions towards this. this. And it wasn't easy because many of the higher education institutions said that we are doing it by ourselves anyway. We are doing it, we are already international, there is no problem. We don't have anything that we could do even better. But when we were doing the guidelines, the first things were like language. Okay. And then, of course, the, um, the employment, uh, the, the, the possibilities of getting jobs for uh, talents from coming outside. It was already mentioned that 30-40% of our, our uh, degree students, they go out. In, when thinking about Finnish people going out after graduation, it's about 2 to 5 percent. So it, there is a kind of lack of, 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 uh, of uh, well, possibilities. And then when thinking about the, um, uh, the kind of natural uh, places where, or themes where you can get international, we can think of, okay, that's research, it's education in, in, where in some ways, culture arts, but there we go to natural sciences, we go to ICT, we go to health, uh, environment, and then we get air, everything actually. So it's all, all themes, all disciplines, whatever, so that it's not the kind of thing that we can say that we are already international. So uh, if I go just very shortly to these issues where 
where we have to have these kind of uh, different pillars. First of all, uh, today the government is talking about this great uh, international attraction through focusing the latest science and leading edge research. We are talking about the uh, Lippulaiva Ohjelma, that's the uh, um, flagship initiative that was uh, now in the discussions today in, in the um, government. Then we should have Finland as the home of high quality education. We must have something that is different from all the others. Now when we have the tuition fees, this is a core issue. We have to be different from New Zealand. It's on the other side of the world, but anyway, the Chinese are coming here or there, or, or in Indians or Indonesians, whatever. But we have to think about this. Then we have to think about the export issues, but I'm not going to go into this. And then a warm, warm welcome to Finland. We must have these different mm, processes smoothly going on. We have to have this kind of different attitudes what we have today. Then um, the Finnish message is heard internationally. This meaning is meaning that uh, in our sector we are not discussing properly about internationalization. So it's uh, the uh, OCOM, the Ministry of Employment, uh, the uh, Economy and uh, uh, Economy and Employment. You have TECES, you have VTC, you have very um, kind of straightforward discussions with them that how you how you're doing it. But our uh, higher education institutions and Academy of Finland, they are autonomous totally. We get they get funding, uh, we steer them. But um, anyway, it's the autonomy. We we have to respect it. But still, we have to discuss with them. And it's official, but it's also kind of um, informal information steering. Then we will um, uh, select some countries where we will, um, um, we will establish a kind of bridgehead uh, organizations. It's the kind of, we call it Team Finland Knowledge. And it will be jointly together working with the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs, but also, of course, with uh, em employment and the economy, so that, that Finnish higher education and research is seen uh, in those countries. And, and also that we are involved in those discussions what are taking place there, wherever. And then we will really now tap the talents, to say that the alumni, it must, this is a challenge that we have been facing for so, so many years. And then also our experts that are living everywhere in the world. So these are the kind of seven pillars and we are now working on, on the action plan and it should be ready, I just heard in the morning, it should be ready by next weekend. So that um, this is uh, going very fast. And um, uh, the, um, the point in our performance now here is that we are really trying to make our role here <laughs> see that that uh, we are we are producing or we actually did already it's uh, almost ready the um, the brochure that will be now then distributed to to uh, all our uh, embassies around the world and of course to other other so that it will be on 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 internet so that it will be like welcoming people to Finland, the talent, and so forth. And um, I think that I'll stop here, but if you have any questions then now or later on. You can ask. Yeah, yeah. okay, please. Yeah. yeah actually, regarding, regarding on this, uh, this talent attraction, especially... Oh. Yeah, just uh, regarding on the talent attraction, especially which when you're talking about the team thing one, then mm -hmm. in, uh, let's say, like in, in the targeted country, and then, uh, then we are talking about the foreign, uh, uh, foreign, foreign ministry, then which means that uh, ge uh, basically embassy and then the general consulate. So uh, then when we think about the, uh, how to attract, let's say, like the university students and talents and to, to Finland, especially when we're starting to have the uh, uh, you know, tradition fees and uh, mm. later on. So uh, have you ever considered about the, uh, you know, making, a, let's say, like uh, putting the, the cities involved? Because quite a lot of cities we have, like, for instance, like, uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce mm. myself. Uh, my, uh, I'm from one time from City of Espo, the head of international affairs, mm. and uh, City of Espo we have the uh, sister city. Uh, oh yes. Yes, quite a lot. Yes. And then, especially in China, and we mm. have like every uh, just Espo yes. high school. Yes. We have yep. like a sister high school. Yep. So by through that channel, mm. we can attract more like talents. Yes. 
to, to our universities. Yeah. Yeah, this was actually the, uh, the idea because we have our um, um, colleague in, uh, in, uh, in the embassy in Beijing yes. and he has been doing this and uh, he has been emphasizing the role of cities, the sister cities. For example, Tampere and Guangzhou and Espo and Shanghai and Helsinki and Beijing and so yes. forth. We are doing this all the time and um, this is of course a special ca case with China but we'll try to put on this also in other countries. Yeah, yeah. and then the other thing that especially the team in the city of Espo, we have, we have the separate like a moment of uh, um, you know agreement for cooperation between our education service, mm. City of Espo's our education service, uh, with uh, Shanghai's education mm. yes. commission. Yes. So that they yeah. have separate like agreement. Yeah. Yes. So if we can get that yeah. through that separate agreement, yeah, yeah. and then we can attract perhaps more like Absolutely. international talents. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Good. Okay. Thank so. you. Now, as you remember, the main issue is here uh, looking how we could boost the innovation ecosystem through the international talents. And now we go a little bit further with that. So Timo Hamalainen uh, from Citra will have a presentation about the innovation systems and how they can attract talent. And we use now this microphone. This is better so that you get a louder voice, please, Timo. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm not an expert on uh, international human capital, so I'll be focusing more on on uh, on these uh, innovation ecosystems. Um, but I hope to build a bridge uh, between uh, them and international human capital because they are uh, intimately uh, intertwined. So I've been uh, both studying and and working on uh, the issue of uh, industrial innovation policy and uh, how to facilitate the growth of uh, new business ecosystems or innovation ecosystems for uh, quite a few years already. Um, and I, I will uh, focus more on, uh, on uh, the issue of why we have started to discuss uh, uh, innovation and business ecosystems more recently, both in Finland and the other industrialized countries to sort of lay the background for uh, why international human capital is, is important for the growth of the Finnish uh, economy and also uh, all other industrialized economies. Um, I'll uh, start by um, uh, focusing on some uh, uh, change economic realities and then gradually move towards uh, ecosystems and finally say some, some, uh, some, some words about uh, uh, international human capital. Uh, so if we start with uh, the current situation in the world economy, uh, I'm sure you all know that we are going through a historical transformation um, that involves uh, these new information technologies and the globalization of, of both markets and uh, value-adding systems. Um, um, at the same time, uh, the degree of specialization in production processes has come to uh, uh, unforeseen level, uh, international corporations are locating their different business activities around the globe based on the absolute advantages of different locations uh, around the world. Uh, so we are not anymore uh, talking about uh, relative uh, comparative advantage of countries, uh, which used to be the story in economics um, some hundred years ago. Uh, which meant that countries, even if they didn't have, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the world's best competitive advantage in any industry, they could still produce something because the, uh, the productive resources were not mobile across the countries. Uh, and so uh, by just lowering prices, uh, countries could produce something. But nowadays, when both uh, investments and knowledge and human capital is increasingly mobile, uh, the countries and the regions need to be pretty much best in something if they want to uh, have a, a prosperous economy. So uh, nowadays you need a absolute uh, competitive advantage. And when you build that uh, advantage, uh, you need both the competitive advantages of firms in the organizations and their environment. So you need uh, both uh, firms and and. Uh, the policymakers that develop the environment in which these firms operate 
uh, to pull together uh, and, and develop a system that is competitive. So firms will not be competitive by themselves. Uh, they need uh, the competitiveness of the surrounding environment. And that's why we're talking about this systemic approach and we're talking about uh, uh, business and innovation ecosystems uh, in, in policy making. Now, if we look at the Finnish situation, uh, and by the way, the, the 2008 uh, or the economic crisis that began 2008 has hit all industrial countries pretty much similarly. So Finland is not a unique case. But if you look at the Finnish case, you can see that uh, it was a major blow to our economy. We still haven't recovered from, uh, from uh, this um, crisis that began 2008. Some other countries have uh, recovered better, and we need to work harder here in Finland. Uh, GDP is still lower. Uh, our exports are lower than 2008. Uh, and the structural unemployment uh, is also much higher than 2008. So we're talking about the major structural crisis in our economy. Um, and I think one of the key challenges that we have in Finland is to change our economic discourse uh, towards this uh, structural adjustment going uh, through in our economy uh, from the very high macro level that Finnish economic policy uh, discourse uh, usually takes place at. So, so we are very used to... Uh, talking about macroeconomic issues like uh, the budget deficits, the unemployment rate, the interest rate level, or the incomes policy agreements. Um, these are macro-level issues. Uh, and we have been talking about these issues for at least 25 years, as, as long as I have uh, followed closely the Finnish economic policy discourse. Um, but the problem is that uh, at this level, we see the symptoms of this uh, structural crisis that we are going through. Uh, the structural unemployment creates budget deficits uh, and we're trying to solve the budget deficits uh, with various means, uh, mostly at the macroeconomic level. Um, and I think we should focus much more on the root cause of our problems, uh, which lie at the real economy level. And uh, industrial innovation policy uh, are, are the policy instruments that can most directly improve situation at this level. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yes. Um, I'm also trying to keep track of what I was trying to say. So, so um, in many other countries, uh, there is uh, um, a lot of discussion about industrial policy and, and how it should uh, renew itself. Uh, there's, uh, some people call it uh, industrial policy renaissance. And for the obvious reason that all industrial countries are going through similar structural adjustment as we are here in Finland. So they have also lost uh, their established economic activities to other countries. Their firms have become global and they have shut down factories in, in, in their countries. And, and, and they are now struggling to create new economic activities. And, 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 and that's the challenge that we're facing here in Finland and, and they are in other countries. Um, so we need to think really hard how we can uh, create new growth areas, new growth ecosystems uh, in, into our economy. Now, the economic landscape uh, has changed so that uh, increasingly uh, innovative economic activities take place in major uh, cities. Um, and, and also the, um, uh, the labor force and the human capital is, is concentrating into these growth centers. And we have to take this into account once we are uh, developing our uh, policy measures. So uh, this is the world in, into which the Finnish strategies have to fit also. Uh, now, if we look at the, uh, uh, the two main uh, streams of uh, policymaking in Finland since the early 1990s, you can, you can say that we, are, uh, uh, we have focused on uh, creating competitive uh, environments for the established sectors and clusters in our economy, uh, based on the ideas of Michael Porter in the early 1990s. Uh, and at the same time, we have tried to uh, um, create good conditions for all firms uh, in Finland, which is uh, usually called this horizontal policy making. Now, now these two policy approaches have served us well. Um, 
as long as the economic structures didn't change very much. Um, um, and the, the challenge uh, with these approaches is that they don't systematically focus <laughs> on uh, st strategically creating new growth areas in the economy. So the focus has been at the firm level supporting uh, 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 promising growth companies. But in terms of uh, focusing on some promising uh, growth areas or ecosystems, um, we haven't had uh, a very systematic approach uh, in that respect. And that's what the new uh, policy approach uh, aims to do. Uh, to be more strategic, perhaps uh, making some strategic choices as to which uh, business areas are most promising uh, from the Finnish economy's perspective <coughs> and try to proactively, together with the firms in public-private way, to promote those sectors' growth. Um, and the focus is on um, economic uh, or business activities rather than entire clusters uh, because the clusters have pretty much disintegrated and become global. So um, um, you cannot have all the activities in a, in a particular business system in your country or your region, uh, yeah, but you can have some of them and, 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 and they can be interrelated. So that's the uh, new approach that is being discussed in different uh, 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 countries um, at the moment. And we have been thinking uh, together with our colleagues in, in TECES and FINPRO and the Ministry of Employment and Economics, uh, Academy of Finland, and the other innovation players of how we could better facilitate uh, the, the formation of these kinds of new growth areas and innovation and business ecosystems. And, and I'll show you uh, the sort of rough sketch of the approach that we came up with. The first, there are three stages. The first stage is the, and the first challenge is to identify the uh, emerging potential growth areas and uh, business uh, or innovation ecosystems wherever they are located in Finland. Um, and for this, you need both very good understanding and, and knowledge about the different uh, business activities around Finland, but also uh, very good understanding of international markets and international value adding, adding systems that relate to these domestic uh, economic activities. So you need to combine knowledge from these two sources. And that's a major challenge. And there, uh, international uh, uh, experts in Finland uh, can, can be very uh, valuable, uh, bringing in their uh, uh, international understanding of markets and, and uh, business activities in different countries. Um, you can also uh, uh, have an open uh, process of, uh, of uh, like in Sweden, they had an open call for uh, new innovation areas in their economy. They basically ask the, uh, uh, openly uh, the, the Swedish citizens and, and experts uh, about their ideas of which areas in their economy could be potentially new growth areas. Mm -hmm. and, and they could very good uh, proposals. Um, and in, in a small scale, we have also uh, tried that in Finland in the Tekesis Bionets uh, program. Now, then, in the next stage, um, if you have then identified uh, potential new growth areas and, and ecosystems, uh, you need to uh, have somebody to convene the, the different stakeholders together to think about the, the, the future vision for that ecosystem and also to develop a, a shared strategic agenda. Without su su such a, a, a shared vision and strategic agenda, it's not really a good idea to move forward to the actual development work because it will dis disintegrate. So you need that kind of a commitment to a shared agenda and vision uh, to move forward. Uh, and this might take uh, half a year, one year, even, even two years in some cases, because you need to build the trust between the different players. And the final stage then, if you get that commitment and you have a good vision and a strategic agenda, is to go to the actual development work, the public-private long-term development work that might take even 10 years before the uh, commercial uh, uh, results materialize. So you need a really long-term perspective, and the public policymakers uh, need to be very pragmatic once they uh, collaborate with the firms. Um, 
I'm not sure if I have the, 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 the slide here about the uh, emergence of our telecommunications sector in the 1980s, but that's, that's a good example of such a very pragmatic um, and holistic approach. Now, uh, moving towards, uh, towards the end, uh, I would like to highlight the fact that uh, this is a very busy graph, so don't pay much attention to it, but um, what we found uh, useful in uh, thinking about how to approach the development of these uh, uh, new ecosystems is to focus on uh, some key uh, governance challenges. Uh, one of which is the fact that you have multiple players. You need to somehow foster collaboration between them. You also need to build uh, a shared and holistic understanding of what we are aiming at. And that's a challenge. You need to coordinate different players. Uh, you need to have enough diversity and adaptiv adaptability uh, to change the course uh, when you have this long development process and, and, and things happen. And finally, you have to somehow overcome the path dependence of, of these different players to, to, to focus on these new activities. I will not go into the, the details of how you can tackle these problems, but collaboration, collective learning processes, uh, these shared visions, and diversity are some of the key uh, issues. Uh, diversity brings you these different uh, understandings of, uh, of the, 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 the uh, development challenges. It also uh, brings you uh, these uh, diverse connections uh, internationally that you can utilize when you uh, move to the markets. So I, I, I view uh, the development of these ecosystems as a, as a wicked policy challenge. It's similar to solving uh, climate change problems, that you have multiple players, uh, you have to coordinate between them, and it's tough. Um, now, it was already mentioned why, why diversity is, is important. Um, I've... Uh, um, gone through um, some literature on uh, major scientific breakthroughs. And this graph uh, comes from that uh, uh, research. Uh, uh, Professor Rogers Hollingsworth uh, went through 350 major scientific breakthroughs that produced Nobel Prizes and, and similar uh, scientific uh, uh, breakthroughs. And uh, a very uh, simple graph emerged from that uh, or those case studies. And, 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 and that is also um, actually um, the same graph could be uh, done about innovation processes more generally. So um, it seems that the best environment for major innovations is one in which you have experts from related but different fields so that their backgrounds are not entirely similar, but they are not very different either, so they are moderately different, so that they can start discussing with each other uh, and they have uh, different but complementary knowledge. And the uh, environment in which they work allows them to be in intensive long-term face-to-face communication. Uh, so if you want to build environments in which major new ideas emerge, that's the, the way you want to organize your uh, activities. And of course now international human talent is, is, is a great way to move from here where you have only Finnish experts who have pretty much the same background towards a situation where you have more diverse thinking. Uh, but those experts also need to have uh, flexible minds so that they can collaborate and that they, they understand different types of thinkers. So uh, it's also a challenge for... Uh, culture. Uh, by the way, the best, uh, the, 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 uh, the major scientists that made these uh, breakthroughs, they usually have backgrounds in at least two different cultures. Uh, they could be, for example, Jewish and, and Western in their backgrounds, or they had uh, experience in, uh, uh, for example, cultural activities. They could be musicians and scientists but they had in their heads multiple worlds. So that's what, the, what you need if you 
want to make new combinations. Now moving into, into this attractiveness question, uh, this is a, a, a table that I got from Invest in uh, Finland Bureau yesterday. Um, and you can see there that, uh, that the, the strong ecosystems that we have here uh, are really the ones that attract uh, investments and human capital, capital into Finland. So you have uh, health and wellness uh, investments, you have information, communication tech, you have clean tech, and then uh, I would say travel and mining are, are more based on our, our, our climate and, and uh, natural resources. But uh, it's really important that we um, pay attention to this attractiveness question when we build these uh, uh, ecosystems. I think we can do a lot to, to build the Finnish brand uh, in these specific areas where we have a potential uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, many other countries are very aggressively uh, building their reputations for their ecosystems and, and I think we should perhaps be a little bit more aggressive in that front too. Now I would like to end with the potential uh, competitive uh, advantage that we haven't yet utilized uh, uh, to, to the maximum. And that's our well-being knowledge here in Finland. Uh, as you know, we have a very highly developed uh, welfare state here. Um, so, so we have all kinds of uh, uh, good knowledge about uh, uh, well-being already in the country. But our approach to well-being and, and the well-being discourse in, in, discourse in Finland is uh, focused uh, mainly on the welfare state and on the sort of material basic needs of, of people. And this discourse has not changed much uh, after the 1960s when Pekka Kuusi wrote his uh, 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 famous book about the Finnish welfare state. So we tend to view well-being as, as welfare. Now if we broaden this perspective to also include mental well-being and subjective well-being of people, uh, we would have much broader uh, perspective to well-being and a perspective that we could also utilize in building our uh, ecosystems. There are multiple benefits for uh, taking such a, a broader, more holistic uh, perspective to uh, well-being. First of all, um, and, and, and of course we would have to work hard on, um, um, on, on building world-class uh, knowledge also in, in, in mental and subjective well-being, which we are fo not focusing so much at the moment, uh, at least not in the poli policy discourse. Uh, I know that we have good experts in that field too, but uh, we don't see that as, a, as, a, as an issue uh, at the moment. So with such a holistic uh, 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 well-being advantage, we could uh, develop better uh, living environments for our citizens, we could uh, improve well-being in our organizations. We could support individual citizens in their day-to-day -day choices. Um, um, public sector could focus their scarce resources more carefully on policies that make direct positive impact on our well-being, either in the short or long term. So we would not va uh, waste so much uh, resources. And firms could develop products and services that would have more value added. Because ultimately, the value added for a customer comes from the products or services uh, contribution to their everyday well-being. So if we understood well-being better than others, we could create better products and services that has, have uh, more value added than our competitors. Um, and there are some good examples of major corporations that have been able to tackle some of these new well-being challenges that we have in our advanced societies. I would just mention one, which is Apple. Uh, one, of the, one of the new well-being challenges is life management and the complexity of our everyday life. And what Apple did was to reduce that complexity and not increase it in our everyday life. And, and you all know how su successful that company has been. And finally, um, if we had uh, more innovation uh, based on this world-class uh, well-being knowledge, we would attract more companies to come to this, uh, 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 to this country and our, our different ecosystems. Um, and their experts would also be attracted to Finland because we would have the best knowledge to develop uh, the best living environments for them. 
So it's a win-win. Thank you very much.